so yeah, uh, that was the only comment over there on the YouTube side. Uh, Twitter is here. Uh, so basically, okay, that was weird. Um, let me run down my accolades, all right? I went to WWE in 2018. I was their WWE network logger. And that was my, well, going to WWE, going to WWE was definitely my um, dream since I was seven years old. Um, and then, you know, managing to get my foot into the door, that wasn't really what I wanted to do. Uh, it was available. And then when they let me go, they did not want to put me into the writer's department. Um, I have been uh, wanting to go into the writer's department for years because I got my uh, bachelor's in creative writing and I have a publishing certificate. And I also am writing a wrestling novel. This wrestling novel is not based on my life. This wrestling novel. All right, good job, OBS. Uh, this wrestling novel is not based on my life. It is a fictional wrestling novel that you guys can read over on Amazon. Uh, it is currently on Amazon uh, Kindle Vela. I'm trying that out. There are other places for you to read it. Uh, just uh, DM me if you want to know the other places. Uh, so, yeah. Went to WWE. Helped out on the indies as well. I was part of Rain Crew. Uh, you know, taking tickets, setting up the ring, breaking down the ring, uh, putting um, chairs around. If you're on my... Ooh, excuse me. If you're on my YouTube channel, I have vlogs. Um, I have fun stuff there. So, um, you know, I have a lot of, um, uh, experience, uh, in the business. So it's not like, um, you know, I just decided to one day have a podcast because everyone is having a podcast and, you know, just to say what I want to say. No, it's not like that. Um, you know, I started a podcast because I had the feeling to want to talk and talking is a lot more better than writing because it's a lot more um, in the time, in the moment, rather than writing. You know, I write something, I send it out to people to to read it, uh, the world reads it, but then like no feedback, at least with like an, a podcast or a video cast. You know, I get some type of feedback. I get some type of interaction. Someone is saying something in chat. Someone is either leaving a comment somewhere. So audio is a lot more faster than it is for writing. But I do have, you know, some articles here and there. I write articles for, uh, I write reviews for um, New Japan Pro Wrestling's um, new series, Lion's War. And that's been getting great reviews and stuff. So, you know, I put in the work. As much as the New Japan Pro Wrestling guys put in the work, um, you know, but yeah, enough about that. Uh, there were other topics for me to talk about, uh, which basically was about Bullet Club. And this is um, <clears throat> specifically for Smack Raw Pod. I, I feel like I, I was saying it wrong, but it's Smack Raw Pod. They are uh, amazing. Uh, so Kyle wanted to know, um, so Kyle wants to know about the Bullet Club because he doesn't really follow, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling like that. He doesn't, um, really like know who's in Bullet Club, uh, cause I asked him if he wanted me to, um, uh, I asked him if he wanted me to say the whole history of Bullet Club, of how it got started, like all the family members and all this kind of stuff. But because he said that uh, he just wants to know who's in it, um, we're going to go with uh, what he uh, said. So basically, and he's going to watch this on replay. Hopefully he does. Uh, so Bullet Club was started in 2013. This year we're making nine years. Uh, so our original leader was obviously Finn Balor, uh, followed by, uh, Anderson, Fale, and Tama. Uh, so those were like the four, uh, that came in and started everything throughout the years, members switched out and then they got like, you know, the Japanese guys in it. So like Yujiro, uh, came in, um, trying to think 
Uh, Dick Togo came in. Evil came in later. Um, we have Jado in there. And then we had, um, you know, Gato came in later. Uh, Gato came in uh, sort of, I could say, with like Jay White. Um, when Jay White betrayed uh, Okada, when like it was Jay White, Okada, and Gato in, in Chaos. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, those are like all the members. Um, those are all the members of like Bullet Club, right? So like currently, um, I know you probably, this is still in regards to uh, Kyle from uh, Smack Draw Pod. Um, I know that you probably didn't watch the first ever Bullet Club Civil War. Oh, wait, there's Chase Owens, too. <laughs> Chase is probably going to DM me about that. <laughs> I totally forgot about Chase. Uh, but, uh... So... Yeah, so if you didn't watch the first Civil War, which, by the way, like, I hated that Civil War. Looking back at it, I'm like, that was the most stupidest shit ever. So think of Bullet Club now, as in, like, it's being divided, right? Even though now we have House of Torture, which is uh, evil, usual show. Oh, yeah, show is in there, too. Show is part of Bullet Club. Ah. Uh, listen, man, I'm going to DM you so that I can be on your show. And we're going to talk about Bullet Club, like, through and through, man. Like, I'm going to do that shit. Because right now, I'm like, I should have, like, wrote this shit down. Even though I know it by, by heart. Um, so now in Bullet Club, we have, like, House of Torture is part of Bullet Club. And there's still Bullet Club, if that makes any sense. So, like, uh, over in Japan, we still have Ishimori. Oh, Kenta's part of Bullet Club, too. What the fuck? I feel like I destroyed the segment. I feel like I destroyed the segment. All right. So it's half and half. All right. So Bullet Club America, we're going to call them that over here. So that's uh, Tama, Loa. Got Loa too. Like, you guys better not come into my DMs saying, how could you, Marie, for forgetting about us? Um, so over here we have Tama, Loa, Hikaleo, Chris Bay. Jay White, uh, I believe that's it. That's everybody. We do have El Fantasmo, but I think he's currently still at uh, in Canada after he left uh, New Japan. So he's currently home. Um, so yeah, um, what do you call it? So that's over here in America. So that that's like the core for like American fans to like rejoice from. Over in Japan, we still have Gato, Jado, Yujiro. Oh, wait, and Chase is at home too, but Chase will be considered over here, um, even though he's going to be going over to Japan to like wrestle for the uh, New Japan Cup. So let's add Chase into that. So like I said, uh, Gato, Jado, Dick Togo, Chase, Yujiro, that's what it is, um, Ishimori, Evil, Show. So seven. Can I get it into frame? I could get it. No, I could get it into frame. Seven, right? Uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, so yeah. Wow. Uh, Bullet Club over here are doing their thing, right? Uh, over there in Japan, uh, the four people. Uh, goes by um, House of Torture. So that's Evil, Yudro, uh, Sho, and Dick Togo. They go by House of Torture over there, but they're still called Bullet Club. Um, just so you know, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling does um, basically own um the Bullet Club name, they trademarked it. That's why uh, WWE could never use Bullet Club. And they came up with, like, the club. Um, so if you were wondering for that. 
Um, other than that, um, for you to like really know uh, who's in Bullet Club, the ones that like really matter. If if you are not going to be watching uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's basically Tama Loa, Hikaleo, Chris Bay, uh, Jay White. Yeah. Um, for like over here. Um, I don't think I answered your question uh, with justice. I really don't think so. Um, but yeah, so Bullet Club is doing really well. Um, I hate this. Bullet Club is doing really well, both here in the States and over in Japan. Uh, they're doing the best they can in Japan because they still have like a uh, certain type of like lockdowns here and there and stuff like that. Um, I haven't been able to catch much of like uh, New Japan Golden, which is their celebration of uh, 50 years of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Congratulations to them. Um, so yeah, uh, Bullet Club, that's that. Uh, I had originally put uh, the stuff I want to talk about. So let's see. I finally caught up on... Uh, um, I finally caught up on Impact Wrestling. And man, um, I would like to take a moment to really talk about the main event that had Bullet Club versus uh, Ace Austin, Matt Matt Fulton, um, Jake something, and um, who else was in that? Oh, and uh, uh, Mike Bailey, Speedball Mike Bailey. Um, he reminds me of like Bruce Lee. Uh, for the for the most part, um, uh, when he comes out and stuff, uh, Mike Bailey also like you know he looks like he could go. He has some really great moves, a really great presence, um, and I think that uh, Impact Wrestling is like always the really good um, launching pad for um, wrestlers. Uh, so if you ever want to try to get your character over or try something out. You go to Impact. Um, if you just want to do it the WWE way, you just go to WWE. If you want to get lost in the shuffle, you go to AEW. And if you want to get disciplined and appreciate the art of professional wrestling, you go to uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. So that's how like I consider those companies to be uh, broken up. Um, but yeah, that main event uh, raised everybody elevated everybody and um that's uh i'm part on both of their works uh from you know bullet club being veterans uh chris bay being the finesse that he is and a very uh good student of the game um and you know on the other side having guys like ace austin who could definitely put on one hell of a match uh, Jake something is really uh, coming into his own. So, uh, you know, I really like that, uh, that he's coming into his own. Uh, Speedball, I would have to get used to him a little bit more, watch his matches a little bit more. I do know he streams uh, and he streams matches and he goes over people's matches. Uh, good on him for that. Uh, give him, I give him props for that. Um, but he does look like an all round, like fun wrestler to watch and grow so um thankfully he's fine with um impact so you know we'll see him grow and stuff um so let's see who else uh madman fulton uh is really good as well i can't wait to see him versus uh jake something down the line um now on the bullet club side i tweeted this out very early and again if you're not following me on twitter follow me at marie underscore shadows uh, you probably should. So, um, I had tweeted out saying that I missed when, um, Jay White, Tama, and Loa used to tag together, right? And they tagged together in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and this was back in 2021, when right after, uh, Jay White suffered his, uh, defeat against, Kota Ibushi did not get the championship title belt. And when he came back in February, he automatically went out to Ishii. So the three of them, uh, Switchblade, Jay White, um, Tama and Loa going after Ishii Goto and Yoshihashi, 
they were really teasing for those uh, six men never open weight tag team championships. And I'm like, yo, I can't wait until they like get those championship belts. It never happened. And so, um, I really think that New Japan Pro Wrestling dropped the ball with that. Like, I really wish that they would have had the six men never open weight tag team championships just for a little bit. It didn't have to be for the whole year because then, you know, COVID happened and then like the lockdowns happened. Like it would have been a little difficult. But then again, if they would have had it for maybe like a month or two, drop it back to Ishii Goto and Yoshihashi, that would have been fine also. Um, so basically, seeing them tag team together in Impact Wrestling, doing those tag team moves where uh, Jay White did a simple suplex to uh, Speedball. Should have been Speedball. If not Speedball, I think it was uh, Ace Austin. One of those two. Um, and Tama coming over, doing his um, senton where like he leaps in, does a senton, and so does uh, Loa. And then um, Chris Bay doing his leg drop because uh, he had gotten the legal tag. So it was uh, uh, him to be in the ring. Um, so yeah, I was like, man, I miss when they tag together and I wish they would have gave them the belts. That was just so smooth, so perfect. Um, I will say that right now, um, Tama and Jay are like the two that know how to do story appropriately and make the best, uh, wrestling stories. Um, and I will definitely like believe it all the way through. And definitely you guys going to hear me break it down for you guys on my podcast, uh, because that's what I love to do. If I can help you guys understand professional wrestling a little bit better than you understood it yesterday, then my job is done. I just love talking about it and everything. Um, so yeah, Impact is doing great with that. Uh, today, Jay White is going to be at House of Glory to take on uh, Ken Broadway, and that's going to be amazing. I wish I could have been there. I can't really be there right now, uh, but that's going to re really be amazing. Um, just put me over, guys. Put me over with Jay White. Um, that's all you got to do. Um, so, other than that, uh, let's see. Uh, talked about impact. Talked about, you know, me being disappointed in Daniel Garcia. Um, oops. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, let's see. I Like I said, I haven't really been watching um, New Japan Pro Wrestling in, in a little bit. Uh, Carnival Impact. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, last stream, I showed you guys the wrestling novel I was working on. Um, It's not really to say much about WWE. Um, I haven't watched for like the past two weeks. And, um, you know, uh, if I do watch, it's background noise. Um, that's about it. It's background noise. Um, I already ranted about, you know, uh, Jay White just casually showing up on AEW. And by the way, have you guys like thanked him late uh lately for giving AEW the one point whatever million plus views that Jay White got AEW? Cause cause that was all Jay White. So like please go and thank Jay White uh for that. And AEW fans need to stop saying to sign Jay White. Jay White doesn't need AEW. AEW needs Jay White. But then again, AEW doesn't know how to use their guys and they keep signing more people. And um yeah, I just really hope that Tony Khan does not fuck this up. Uh, because Jay White should definitely be be treated um like the number one asset in all of pro wrestling. 
I do find it funny though that um, you know, Tama had tweeted out about like burning bridges, uh, to like Tony Khan, like something like that, and then all of a sudden you see uh Jay White show up, uh, to help move along the Young Bucks and Adam Cole storyline until Kenny comes back. That's the only reason why they brought in like Jay White is to move that along, um. Yeah, because if not, like, we probably would have never seen uh, Jay White until a little bit later. Uh, Jay White would have still be calling people out on his uh, US of J tour uh, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, you know, uh, they gave him Daniels, Christopher Daniels. Uh, so basically, that's cool. But he wants, like, more competition, better competition. Um, I do hope that in New Japan... Um, they start doing more with um Jay uh rather than him just doing the open challenge. If he would have still kept the uh the never open weight championship, which by the way, I'm still a little bit upset that they took it away from him and they gave it to Ishii and now and now evil has it, which makes no sense. But then again, uh we'll see what happens. But you know, they would have kept it on Jay White. Um, they definitely would have, uh, you know, his US of J tour would have been that much better because then it could have been like, well, who's finally going to dethrone Jay White for that never open weight championship belt. If anything, um, New Japan Strong needs some more titles. They need a tag team title. They need a, another title just to hold them over and not just have Tom Lawler to be like, I think he's probably their only and, and longest reigning New Japan Strong champion. Uh, nobody over there has like challenged him as much. Uh, you know, um, hey, I mean, if uh, Danny Garcia is so worried about uh, people choosing Gabriel Kidd over him, why not Danny Garcia go, you know, to New Japan Strong, challenge Tom Lawler, and uh, see if uh, Tom Lawler will put that bell on the line and see what happens, you know? But I did say in the previous episode that, like, I want uh, Gabriel Kidd to go for that uh, strong title. But then again, you know, um, if all you got to do is uh, vanity search um, in this little mini war, why not just go do the work, uh, show up at his workplace and challenge him and be like, yo, you got to stop talking shit. Like, we got to settle this in the ring one on one, uh, man to man, you know, rather than trying to delete. Uh, um, Twitter comments like really dude um but yeah uh new japan strong um but yeah um i just don't want tony khan to fuck up jay white in any way uh i do know that it has been signed that on rampage we're gonna see uh jay white take on trent uh take on trent um jay white better not lose that match uh just because um you know He's the number one asset, um, and you don't really do that to, like, your number one asset or someone that, like, you know, you would consider their, their number one asset all of pro wrestling. Um, I can't think of anything else. Um, I got out everything that I wanted to say, so this is definitely going to be such an explosive uh, podcast episode. And, you know, for anyone that's listening to this on replay... Um, you know, thank you for listening to it on replay. Um, but it's always great if you can listen to it live. Um, I announce, um, oh, we'll save MOW for a proper, um, podcast episode and a proper live stream. Um, because I just got reminded that, uh, you know, MOW this week, man, um, that had me, but I was also like, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, the coolest uh, it couple in professional wrestling. Uh, so stay tuned to that. But again, like it will be great if you uh, come here, watch it live. Um, always follow me at Maria at Maria underscore shadows. Um, so basically, you know, you know, when I go live. Uh, there's other places that you can definitely follow me at, uh, which I'll tell you in a little bit. Um, I do thank everyone that has come in. I do thank uh, the guys from Restings uh, to come back. Uh, 
to come back and to uh also say what's up and yeah um their interview with Gabe, uh with gabriel kid make sure to um check it out um post up your opinions uh because you know opinions are just opinions um it's not saying that like you know we're taking sides like it's a be all end all if you have an opinion it's basically just you having an opinion having a thought and you know not everyone is gonna agree and that's okay you can keep it scrolling right like it's not going to hurt you in any way if i say that i side with gabriel kid over daniel garcia i just see more of the work put in than anything else so that's the only reason why I would side with somebody is because I can see the work. You can see how they develop. You can see how they grow. And you can understand their character and be like, great, this is professional wrestling. And again, like I said, my job is to make sure how I can help professional wrestling, professional wrestling be better than what it was yesterday. That's all it is. Um... Okay, I'm just going to end it there because if not, I'm just going to keep talking in circles and someone is going to point that out and it's okay. Um, I will say that I am not angry, upset or anything. I'm just disappointed. But this was very fun to talk to you guys about the whole incident over on Twitter and then, you know, going into my topics and stuff like that. Um, so again... I am Marie Shadows of the Square Circle Podcast. I love talking about professional wrestling. I love helping professional wrestling in any way, shape, or form. And if that means to critique your character and try to make you a better wrestler than you were yesterday, then, like, you know, the offer is always there. The help is always there. Um, you know, I'm very well respected in the wrestling business and the wrestling community, and I'm always there to help. I, you know, am selfless in that. I even help out my podcasting peeps um, because I love what they do and we all need to start doing more positive things and just letting people know that like we're all in this together. We're all in this to make wrestling that much better than it was yesterday. Um, if you don't like my opinion, that's totally cool. Uh, don't don't vanity search. Just go and do the work. That's it. Um <laughs> Hey, Mike World Order just followed us. Um, hey, I am just ending this whole entire live stream. I was streaming for more than like what it says. Yes, uh, Mike is totally right. Um, for you guys that are watching uh, on Twitch and YouTube um, and, and hearing this on the audio side, uh, Mike, uh, stays putting in the work. Uh, he does a lot of his shows live, um, and he's very consistent with it. And I also help out too on the Mike world order, um, talking about, uh, professional wrestling news, uh, you know, kicking it with the guys over there and they've been super supportive. So for anyone that is watching this on replay and like hearing this on the podcast, go search up Mike, Mike world order over on Twitch and um basically go follow them that's all you gotta do go follow them but mike i am ending yes you guys could definitely see me on the show um thursday on their thirsty thunder show uh that's gonna be fun um you guys should definitely tune in for that but mike i am ending the uh podcast now uh just because um i have nothing else to talk about I already hit all of my points, um, especially during the whole shit of uh, Daniel Garcia vanity searching um, and trying to have a gotcha moment with me. He tried. He tried. He tried. I'll give him that. He tried. But when you are a New Yorker, you just got to think way better than, than, than a New Yorker because um, New Yorkers are savage. OK, I'm just saying New Yorkers are savage. We could get pretty. <laughs> we can get pretty nasty with certain things. Lady Switchblade is the human gotcha moment. I try to have my gotcha moment. I mean, like I, I gave him a gotcha moment um, and he stood quiet. I did give him the link uh, to this whole entire stream. 
and see if he wanted to pop up in chat to say something or wanted to come on and tell his side of the story of why he's better than Gabriel Kidd. Uh, maybe next time. And by the way, Lady Switchblade is uh, Mike's uh, cute little nickname for me, which I have, you know, accepted. I like it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is basically like the ending. Um, so again, I'm Marie Shadows of the Square Circle Podcast. You can find this live stream on twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows. And you can definitely find this over on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Square Circle Podcast. When you guys are listening to the audio version, it is going to be on anchor.fm forward slash Square Circle Podcast. It's going to be on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon Music. That's right. My podcast is on Amazon Music and also on another network. Um, and if you don't know, I am writing a wrestling novel. Uh, you guys can definitely go check that out over on uh, Amazon and or uh, www.ko-fi.com forward slash Marie underscore shadows. That is my Ko-Fi page or Ko-Fi page, however you say it. Um, what it is that it's better than Patreon. It allows me to be the creative that I know that I am. I have a shop on there. I have commission on there. I have various articles um, and membership tiers. The lowest membership tier starts at 99 cents. The highest, it goes to $12. So if you enjoyed this live stream, and if you enjoy my other works, please head over to www.ko-fi.com forward slash Marie underscore shadows, pick yourself a membership, or just give me a one-time $3 hug and we, and we will be Gucci. We will. Um, there's a lot more exciting stuff, uh, but again, you know, I'm very open to like collaborations. Uh, thank you again to uh, Rest Things for stopping by. Um, of course, of course, of course. We always have to have the one, the one when I'm doing my outro. Of course. Yo, buddy, you are way too late to the podcast. It's okay. I already posted how many listeners I got. So it's all right. Cool, dude. You're, you're super late. Um... So, yeah, again, check this out on audio and video and just, uh, you know, follow me over at at Marie underscore shadows on Twitter. And again, thank you to rest things for uh, stopping by, showing me love the same way that I show them love for their uh, amazing interview with Gabriel Kidd. And yeah, it is always going to be Gabriel Kidd over Daniel Garcia. I'm Marie Shadows, this is Square Circle Podcast, and I'll see you guys in the next one.